Okay, so welcome again. We'll be covering sequences and series. I want you to write down this as your heading. November 2018, paper one and question two. Okay. We'll also do question three. I assume that is also on sequences and series and perhaps question four. If not, then we'll probably move on to another past paper, but we'll at least do two past papers. Um, yeah, and then use that as our practice. So we first get a quadratic sequence. This is the first question. Given the quadratic sequence, two, three, 10, and 23. Two, three, 10, and 23. Let me write it on top. Two, three, 10, 23. Okay, these are the first four terms of a quadratic sequence. The next question is, oh, sorry, the first question is, write down the next two terms of the sequence. Write down the next two terms. Now let's first have a look and see what is the pattern here. So we know it's quadratic, which means the first differences will form an arithmetic sequence. Okay, so the first difference is one, seven, and 30. Okay, and that does form an arithmetic sequence where the difference is six. Okay, so that means that the second difference of this pattern is six. The second difference of the quadratic pattern is six. Okay, and I wanna bring your attention to the fact that this first differences forms an arithmetic pattern. Okay. So let's find the general formula because that's the next question. Determine the nth term for the sequence. Let's find a general formula for this pattern. Okay. Now the general formula of a quadratic pattern is a n squared plus b n plus c. If we were, will you start us off? How do I work out a, b, and c? Oh, yeah. For a. Like, Sorry. Like, you see the first terms of the. Of yes. This, yeah, the tree that you made. You have to equate like there's equations for them. Like you have to. Okay, so so give me the equations. Kind of forgot, sir. Okay. <laughs> okay, I like that you remember the method, but you you forgot the exact equations. Okay, so I'll help you out here. Yeah? The first equation is two a equal to six. That's the the first. Uh, that's the second difference. Sorry, six is the second difference. So you say two a equal to six. The next equation is where we say. 3a plus b is equal to the first term of the first differences, the first term of the first differences. And then the last equation is a plus b plus c. And this is equal to the first term of the quadratic sequence. So it's the original pattern given. Right, use these formulas to work out A, B, and C. Two A equal to six, that means A is equal to three. So that's my first answer. Next equation. 3a plus b equal to 1. a is equal to 3. That means 3 times 3 is 9. If you take the 9 across, 1 minus 9 is negative 8. Lastly, we have c. 
So A plus B plus C is equal to two. Um, A is three, B is negative eight. You add that up and then you take it over. So it's negative five. If you take it over, you add it to the two, which gives us seven. And therefore, our answer is three n squared minus eight n plus seven. Nicely done, okay. Now I have the formula, but I don't know if this is the correct formula for the pattern. How do I check if it's the correct formula? Anna, any suggestions on how I can check if this is the correct formula? Um, so you can sub in your term number and then check if it gives you this like the same. Very nice. Okay, so which like, term do you think will be appropriate to check? Um, so can't you like choose anyone? Like if you sub in a one, then it must give you like two, or if you sub in a Two, it must give you three. That's, that is correct. I, I I usually don't like substituting one and two for um because because sometimes they give me the correct answer, but then it's the formula is still wrong. So I like always substituting something further than one or two. So I'd either substitute three or four. Now let's substitute term four. I'm gonna substitute n with four and then see if it gives me that 23 as my answer. Okay, so let me erase this so I can do that on the side here. I don't know if you um, pick that up sometimes. Maybe you substitute and you get the first two terms, but then the third term is somewhere like this different. So you're like, whoa, what happened here? Okay, so I'm gonna substitute n with four. You have three times four squared minus eight times four plus seven. Okay, uh, dun, 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 dun. four squared is 16. If you times that by three, you get 48. Four times eight is 32. 48 minus 32 is 16. And if you add seven to 16, you get 23. Cool, so this is the correct formula because we got the correct um, we got the correct answer there. We got the 23. Oh, how else you can do it no? or <laughs> how else you can do it. Another way to do this is also just to use the table um, function in your calculator. Then you go to or you press mode, and then you go to the table mode. So it will give you this function f of x. Now in there, you will just punch in your function. Um, actually, this is not gonna be n's, this is gonna be x's. So you, you punch in three x squared minus eight x plus seven. And then you start, I guess, at one. And you can end at four, since we are given the first four functions, or sorry, four terms. Uh, and you can make your step also one. So you increase by one each time. And then the table will appear with X and Y values. So you'll have X values, one, two, three, and four. And then your Y values will be the, the actual values of the terms, it will be the, the, um, the two, the three, the 10, and the 23. Okay. Yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it, I didn't answer the first question. They asked us for the first, sorry, for the next two terms, and I didn't answer that question. Uh, so can we do it quickly? Two, three, 10, and 23. Let's see what's the pattern here. One, seven, and 13. Okay. Uh, since we're increasing by six each time, the first differences will be, uh, let's try and do this quickly. 
19 and 25. Okay, which means that those terms on top is going to be 42 and 67. Okay, so here's your answers, 42 and 67. Okay, and that should agree with the formula that you just got also. If you substitute five and six into the formula that we just got, it should give you 42 and 67. Yeah, if it doesn't, then uh, it means that we did something wrong here, which I hope is not the case. Okay. The next question, um, I remember it now. The next question is for us to work out the 20th term. So determine T20. We can do that by simply substituting N with 20. So we're going to say 20 squared or three times 20 squared minus eight times 20 plus seven. Please use your calculators and help us find the answer to this. Uh, what's your answers? Is it this? Yes, sir. Cool. Okay. Right. And that's the end of the quadratic sequence. Okay. So moving on to question 2.2. Here they say, given the arithmetic sequence, 35, 28, and 21. So this is now an arithmetic sequence, meaning it only has a constant first difference. So, and you can even see here, because these are the multiples of seven, that the difference is also just seven. Okay, but very important, it's not just seven, it's negative seven. Okay, I almost forgot that. So the difference is negative seven. Right, here they say, calculate which term in the sequence will have the value of negative 140. Okay, a bunch of ways to do this, but let's just do it the most systematic way by using the arithmetic formulas that we already know. Okay, so this is your standard arithmetic formula. Right, A is the first term, which in this case is 35. D is your difference, uh, negative seven. N is the number of the term and TN is the value of the term. Now, what did they give us? They gave us the value of the term and we need to calculate which term. So we need to work out N by substituting TN with 140. Now, before I do that whole substitution and calculation, I just wanna simplify this left-hand side first. Sorry, this is, this is the right-hand side. I first want to subset, um, simplify the right hand side. So we have 35 minus 7n plus 7, and therefore this is equal to negative 7n plus 42. Okay.
I know there are some of us that can get to this formula by just looking at the equation, sorry, looking at the sequence, they can just jump immediately to this formula. And it's helpful to know such tricks, okay? Um, because they just make your, your, your life easier when you're in the exam and you have to rush through things. Okay, uh, not rush, but move quick. Uh, rushing is always bad. Okay, so to find this term, I'm gonna make it equal to 140 and I'm gonna solve n. All right, so we take the 42 across. We then divide by seven. And 182 divided by seven is equal to, is a 26. Please confirm that. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So I knew this was 20. The 140, that was, that was 20, because seven times two is 14. So this is zero. And then also 42 is seven times six. So that's where I got the six from, 26. Okay. Here's the question I actually want us to have a look at. Right, so this one says, for which value of n will the sum of the first n terms of the arithmetic sequence in question 2.2 be equal to the nth term of the quadratic sequence in 2.1. Wait, let's read that again. For which value of n will the sum of the first n terms, so they're talking about the sum of the first n terms of the quadratic no, of the arithmetic sequence in the first question be equal to the nth term of the quadratic sequence in the second question. Hmm. So there's, there's a sum of question 2.1 and then there's a, the, the term formula, the nth term uh, of the second question of question 2.2. And they say, for which values of n will it be equal? Okay, so I need to make them equal to each other. The sum of the sequence in 2.1 and then the nth term in 2.2. Actually, it's the other way around, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, the sum of 2.2 of um, and the nth term in 2.1. Okay, I, I was confusing you guys there now but this is the correct way now. Okay, so what was the sequence in 2.2? The sequence was 35, uh, 28, and 21, et cetera, going on. And they want us to work out the sum to all of these terms here and find the nth term that will be equal to also the nth term of the quadratic um, pattern in, in the first question. So the quadratic pattern in the first question was 3n squared minus 8n plus 7. Okay, now there's a formula we can use to add up all of these things. Okay, and the formula is n over 2 bracket 2a plus n minus one times the difference and we shut the bracket. Okay, so that's the formula I'm gonna use over there. Um, A will be the first term, so that's the 35. D is the difference, which is the negative seven. I'm just gonna simplify everything and hope and pray that we can solve in this way. Okay, before I actually go ahead and solve the equation, are there any questions here? And I'll pause the video just to 
if you have any questions. Okay, so let's just simplify this. Two times 35 is 70. So I'm gonna have a 70 on that side. Um, and then I'll multiply with the seven, the negative seven inside the bracket. Nothing can change on this side. So I'll just keep all of that the same. If I want to, I think I'm gonna multiply with two on both sides. The reason why is because I don't want this fraction there all the time. Okay, so I'm gonna multiply with two on both sides. That would get rid of the two in front here, and that should double all the terms on this side. Okay. So, um, multiply that by two, we just have n being multiplied with the negative seven n plus 77. That's the seven plus the 70. Oh, and these terms need to be doubled. So it's going to be 6n squared, 16n plus 14. All right. Multiply it further and solve the quadratic. Uh, take your like terms over to the one side, add them up, make use of the quadratic formula. Oh, I hope this is right. Um, negative 93. Can that be correct? Yes, that has to be. Okay, so now you may use the quadratic formula on that last equation then. Negative 93 plus minus the square root of 93 squared minus 413, 14 over 213. Okay. So is the 93 what? not supposed to be negative, so? Yes, thank you very much. That is supposed to be negative. Okay, do you have answers, Uda? Almost so. I wonder if we can't factorize this. Who's brave enough to factorize this? The factors of 14 and 13 to give us 93. Must we try? No, I'm not going to do it. Now. Uh, 3n squared minus 2 in the one bracket and the other bracket in minus 7. Wait a minute, give me again. 3n minus 2. 13n minus 2. No, 3n, so 3n minus 2. Oh, but, it, but it can't be 3. Shouldn't it be the factors of 13? It is 13n, 13n minus 2. Yeah, this makes sense. Because 13 times 7 is 91. And then if you add the 2, you get 93. So yeah. What's the answers you get from the quadratic formula? And that one is seven, yeah, that's right. Okay, cool. Um, 
So since n can't be a fraction, like can you see this is a fraction 2 over 13, that cannot be one of the solutions. Okay, so the 2 over 13 uh, can't be one of our solutions because it has to be a whole number. Okay, so basically what this question is saying is that if you take the pattern of 2.2, no, it started with 35 and then it was 35, um, 28, uh, 21. And if you were to add all the terms in this thing up until the seventh term, if you added all the terms up until the seventh term and you also worked out what the seventh term is for the first pattern, do you remember the first pattern was um, two, three, uh, 10 and 23. If you worked out what that seventh term was, this seventh term of this pattern will be equal to the sum of the first seven terms of this pattern. Okay, that's what you calculated now. Okay, I hope it makes sense now. I hope it makes sense. They always phrase the question so weird. It actually wasn't weird, but it's just weird for us because we like time to understand what are they actually asking here? You know, for which values of n will the sum of the first n terms of an arithmetic sequence in 2.2 be equal to the nth term of the quadratic sequence in 2.1? That does sound very confusing, but once you understand what they're asking you, it's actually easy to get that six marks over there. Okay, moving on to the next one. So this is still from November 2018, but this is the next question. So we did the quadratic and the uh, arithmetic. This is now the geometric sequence. A geometric sequence has a constant ratio of a half, and it has a sum to infinity of six. Calculate the first term of the series. They give us a ratio and a sum to infinity. Okay, and we need to find the first term. The sum to infinity formula looks like this. A over one minus R, where A is the first term of the geometric series and R is the ratio of the sequence. So since they're giving us the sum to infinity as six, I'm going to substitute that over there. We don't know what A is, so that stays unknown, but we do know that the ratio is a half because that was also given. What you've just done now is structured an equation where you can solve A. Okay, so go ahead and solve A. I would simplify the denominator and then I would cross multiply. Okay, one minus a half is a half. And when you cross multiply, that is six times a half, which is equal to three. So A being the first term is equal to three. All right, that's your first term. Next question, calculate the eighth term of the sequence. Calculate the eighth term. Um, so here we need to make use of a term formula, right? Because we're trying to find the eighth term. Let's first see what the term formula is. So it's A times R to the power of N minus one. Always start with your formulas. 
That's why it's so important to know your formulas by heart. You can't be wasting time looking at the formula sheet. Yeah, you need to know them by heart. A is the third term, sorry, A is equal to three. <laughs> um, A is the first term, which is equal to three. R is the ratio, a half. And N is the position of the term. So we're looking for the eighth term, which means that N should be eight. Okay, so we say eight minus one, part of the formula, and we work out what that answer is. Uh, what's two to the power of seven? Is that not 128? Yes, sir. Cool, okay. So the seventh term is three over 128. Right, so here we have sigma notation. Let's see what is this all about. Given, uh, and let's, let's see how we're gonna read this. Given that the sum, uh, now here where they say k is equal to one, they're basically saying that you start at the first term. So start at term one. Okay, start at term one. That's what they mean there. Um, given that the sum of this sequence, three times two to the power of one minus K um, is equal to 5.8125. Uh, oh, and also they tell us where we end. So we end at the nth term. We, we start at the first term and we end at the nth term. So this is where you stop adding, I guess. Um, because the sum, the sum means to add things, okay? So that E is saying that we are adding terms uh, from the first term to the nth term. They tell us what the answer is. What we need to do is work out how many terms are we adding. So, from the first term to the nth term, that is the total number of terms that we are adding. Okay. Um, we can solve n by using a simple sum formula of a geometric pattern. Um, because they're giving us the sum, that 500, sorry, that 5.8125, uh, that is the, the sum that they're giving us. And so we can solve n. So let's just see, here's your formula. A bracket R, uh, actually I'm gonna write it like this rather, one minus R to the power of n over one minus R. Okay. And the reason I'm writing it this way, I know you can write it a different way also. You can say, um, r to the power of n minus one over r minus one. But the reason why I'm writing it like that is because I already know that the ratio here is going to be a fraction. In fact, the ratio is gonna be a half, okay? Because this, what they are telling me here, or this pattern that they're giving me here is actually the formula for the pattern that we've been dealing with here in the first two questions, okay? It's actually the same pattern, they just wrote it differently. So instead of writing the ratio as a half, they chose to write the ratio as two to the power of negative one. Okay, and so that's what you see here. That's what you see over there. Okay. Now, um, usually I would work out my first three terms, so let's do it that way. Um, I'm gonna work out the first three terms. The first term is if I substitute K with one. Okay, so it's gonna be term one is equal to three to the power of two, no, sorry, <laughs> three times two to the power of one minus one. 
because k is 1, so we substitute k with 1. And then you do the same thing uh, to calculate the second term, substitute k with 2. And then you do the same thing to find the third term. You're going to substitute k with 3. Okay. And your answers should be 3, 3 over 2, and 3 over 4. And you will then figure out from this that your ratio is a half. Okay. But again, we don't need to go through this process because all of this information was given right from the start. Okay. After we answered that first question, we already knew what our first term was and we knew what the ratio was. Okay. So now let's just substitute into our sum formula and then solve um, and solve n. Five point one, sorry, five point eight one two five equal to three times one minus a half to the power of n over one minus a half. Now I don't like decimals. Uh, I don't know about you, but I would rather prefer this to be written as a fraction. Um, so if you would help me here, uh, what is the fraction for that? Um, 93 over 16. 93 over 16. 93 over 16, is that correct? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, okay. I didn't expect it to, to look that ugly, but okay. No offense to 93. Okay, now to get rid of the half, um, I'm going to multiply both sides by a half. So that should cancel this denominator here. And then I'm also going to multiply this side by a half, which should give us 93 over 32. That. So now I want to get rid of this three that is in front of the bracket. So I'm gonna divide the 93 over 32. I'm gonna divide that by three. Okay, so let's divide that by three. And uh, what do we get? Is it 31 over 32? One minus a half to the power of n. Okay, um, I'm gonna do a nice trick here, or not trick really, but um, I just wanna have this thing be positive, okay? So I'm gonna take that over. I'm gonna take that over, and then I'll take the 31 oh, and over 32 over as well. Okay, so um, yeah. Even though I'm trying to solve n, um, instead of taking the one over and have both sides be negative, I'd rather take the n over, which then makes that whole term positive, and then take the 31 over two over. I think that's, that's a neat thing to do. Okay, now one minus 31 over 32 should be one over 32, okay, and uh, we know that 32 is basically 2 to the power of 5, so this is 1 over 2 
to the power of five, which means that n is equal to five. Okay. n is equal to five. Um, so that, that was the last step that you had to do there. N is equal to five. Okay, any questions here? I doubt there'll be any questions on this side, but perhaps any questions with the things that I did on this side? No? Okay. So, as if that wasn't hard enough, uh, let's have a look at question 3.4. If the sum of the first 20 terms of this pattern is equal to P, the sum of the first 20 terms of this pattern is equal to P. Um, by the way, you can actually work out what the sum of the first 20 terms is, and then just sub, you know, then you know what P is equal to. So if, if you can work out that, then you actually have P's value. P doesn't have to be a, another variable, but okay. Here they say, write down this in terms of P. Okay, so they don't want us to calculate P. They want our answer to be in terms of P. Um, yeah, if if they didn't want our answer to be in terms of P, I would have actually just work out what P is because that's just basically the sum of the first 20 terms. So that's just the sum of 20 terms that's equal to P. But that's not what they're looking for. They want us to express this thing in terms of P since we now know that P is basically equal to the sum of the first 20 terms. Okay, so let me write that expression down. We have K equal to one, the 20 on top, and we have this 24, two negative K vibes, okay. Um, I'm gonna ignore this piece for now. We'll get back to this part again. I just want to deal with the formula itself. I just want to just want to work with this and see what's that all about. Um, so I'm going to express 24. I'm going to express 24 as. Uh, let me see what would work here. As two to the power of three times three. And then we still have this other bit of it. Okay, because 24 is equal to two to the power of three times three. I'm basically finding the factors of 24. Uh, now there is a button in your calculator that can help you get to those factors quickly. And you don't have to do it manually. Um, but if you wanted to do it manually, um, you, you probably did this in grade, uh, grade eight or grade nine, where you divide by two, and then you get the number here, you divide by two again, like that, three, and then eventually divide by three. You simply just using prime numbers here. And so this is what we call to prime base a number. Okay, finding the prime basis for the number. So here we have two to the power of three times three. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to split up this. I'm going to split up that as 2 to the power of 2 times 2 to the power of 1. Okay, so why am I doing this? Because I actually want to link this to, to that over there. I want to link it to that. Um, so that 2 to the power of 1, I'm going to join that with this 2 to the power of negative k. Okay, so can you see how I formed this 
which is, I'm trying to get that over there because I want to express it in terms of P. So, so that's what I'm getting there. Okay. Now I have, now I have three times two to the power of one minus K. And here I also have three to the power of two, sorry, three times two to the power of one minus K. Okay. All right. And then this two to the power of two is basically just four. So that we have four times this pattern here that we established in the beginning. Okay. So just four times that pattern. So this can be rewritten as K equal to one four times, um, let me put this in blue, three times two to the power of one minus K. And we already know that is equal to P. So with the four being in front, this is then just equal to four P. This entire thing is just equal to four P. Okay because all the terms is going to be four times bigger than what they were in the beginning. And so, yeah, so the whole pattern, if you work out the sum for this whole pattern from the first term to the 20th term, all those terms is gonna be four times as big, which will make the sum of all of those terms also four times as big. So, so the answer is four P. Okay, any questions? I'll pause the recording here. Any questions? Right. So the first term is one plus a half, or the first factor, because they're calling these factors because um, all of these terms are being multiplied by each other. It's like when you have brackets, when you have to factorize either quadratic or trinomials, or et cetera. Yeah. Um, I wanted to say cubics or quadratics, but anyways, one plus a half is, what's one plus a half? Three over two. Then that is being multiplied with one plus a third. And what is one plus a third? That is four over three, it's four thirds. And then what is one plus a quarter? That is five quarters. And one plus a fifth, that is six fifths. Okay. Now, if you continue like this up to the 98th factor, what will be that 98th factor? So keep in mind, this is the first factor. Okay. You want, what is the 98th factor going to be? One plus one over ninety-nine. One plus one. I think that is correct. Yes. And one plus one over ninety-nine is a hundred over ninety-nine. No, you can just make sure with that with your calculator. One plus one over ninety-nine should be equal to a hundred over ninety-nine. Okay. Let's see what happens here. Since all of these things are being multiplied, let's start by multiplying the first two terms. If we say three over two times four over three, can you see that these threes cancel and you are left with four over three? Sorry, four over two, because <laughs> the threes cancel and you're left with four over two. If you continue multiplying, let's say the first three terms, the fours cancel. So not only threes, but also the fours cancel. And guess what? If we continue, the fives cancel, the sixes cancel, everything in between will cancel except for the, except for the two and the hundred. That's the only two things that will remain. So your answer is, 100 over two, and that's equal to 50. 
<laughs> okay. Thank you, guys. This is, uh, that was the last question. We are done. Um, hope this was helpful. Um, and I hope this question, I guess, you know, challenged your minds like I wanted it to. Anyways, thank you.